Hey, what's going on everybody? This afternoon I sat down at the vise and started cranking out some of these patterns as I was getting pretty low. And it occurred to me I haven't made a video in a while, so I decided to just turn the camera on and film this one. This is actually a fly that I did a video for a few months ago, just in different color combinations and, and materials. Um, the one I did before was kind of an orange bunny strip bait fish pattern, and it produced really well for me over the winter. But with chum fry season kicking off here in Puget Sound, this barred olive one has really, really produced for me the last few weeks. In fact, it's been my, my best producer over the last, say, three weeks. I haven't seen any chum fry yet in Puget Sound, but it's clear from their behavior that the cutthroat are finding them somewhere, probably in some estuaries and at creek mouths and things, because they're just jumping all over bait fish patterns, and they're kind of ignoring a lot of my more general attractor patterns, the squid and the squimp and things like that. So it's clear they have a taste for bait fish and most likely chum fry in particular. With this one, with the, with the barred bunny strip, it kind of gives it that fry look and the general bait fish profile has done very well for me. It's a very easy fly to tie. It's just three ingredients and it kind of meets all of my criteria. Simple to tie, catches fish, and it's very durable. You can catch a lot of fish on just one of these flies and really the hook's probably going to give out before the rest of the fly does. So to get started I have a Arex NS172 curved gamorous hook size 10. This is a short shank wide gap hook that I've really become a fan of this last year. Now when there's resident coho around, especially in, in bigger numbers, this is not the best fly for that because with this short shanked hook and kind of the longer rabbit strip on it, you get a lot of short strikes. But cutthroat being headhunters, they will come up and just attack this fly. And once they eat it with this hook, they are hooked well. So as I said, it, it's really been my, my biggest producer the last, say, three weeks. I've been out quite a bit, both on the beach and in the boat, and this one has just been getting it done. In fact, so much so that I only had a couple left in my box, which is why I started tying them this afternoon. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, I'm using some uh, 10 knot Vivas olive thread, and I'm just going to lay down a thread base, as like any other fly. You can see this is a very, very short shank hook for a size 10. You'd think it would be a lot smaller, but it's it's pretty large hook, but the shank itself, the the part that you tie on is really, really short. Um, of course, you could use this hook to tie some, some shrimp and scud type patterns and, and tie on the actual curve. But for this, I'm just using the flat part. So first step is I'm going to put in some, I've got some, uh, this is Ice Dub, Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe Pearl. Um, I'm just using this because I had it. You could use pretty much any flash you want. You don't need a, anything fancy. Uh, I've done this with just regular flashaboo. I've done them with uh, uh, DNA holochromosome flash, which is my all-time favorite flash. But for this, I just like any sort of kind of pearl flash just to kind of give it some sparkle and add a little bit of length underneath the, uh, the rabbit strip. So I'm just going to take some of this and I'm going to tie it in right behind the eye. And I do this just to keep the body uniform. If you tie it in, if you tie everything in at the back, um, then you kind of end up with a, a clump sometimes. So I'll get that good and secure. It might be a little bit longer than I need. I kind of cut in a little bit of taper into this anyway. This piece that I'm using is one that I've already cut off, so it had square ends and. God knows I hate square ends on any flash or tails. So you don't want this too terribly long. I'm going for about two inches in total length on this one. You can certainly adapt that as necessary. But Next step is I'm, I'm going to be using a dubbing brush here. And this is a dubbing brush that I made and it just uses, uh, uh, uses some orange ice dub, some light orange starburst dubbing from Fly Tires Dungeon and some metallic copper starburst fibers also from Fly Tires Dungeon and it just spun up it gives it kind of a orange coppery type of a, a color to it 
You certainly do not have to use a dubbing brush. Um, I do it because I can and it's fun. Um, you could use just any sort of dubbing in a dubbing loop. You could use a chenille body, like a polar chenille or a cactus chenille. Um, Estaz would work. Uh, basically anything. Um, you could even use like a flat diamond braid. Um, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be something thick and, and bulky. Um, this is just how I've been tying them. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the uh, the details of how to spin this brush up, just because it's not necessary. You can literally use any material you want. Um, so I'm just going to tie tie this tip of this brush in here. Wrap forward, and then I'm not going to do too much with this. I'm going to do maybe four wraps or so. And I'm kind of just stroking the fibers back as I go. And again, any sort of regular dubbing would work. Um, you know, that's why I'm not gonna not gonna include how to make this dubbing brush because it's just not really necessary. I just like to kind of play with dubbing brushes a lot. So get that secured. Trim this brush off with my wire cutting scissors because I don't want to dole up my good ones. Make sure I get that sharp pointy end of that wire out of the way. And the last bit of material here is just a piece of uh, this is black barred olive bunny strip. Um, you know, hairline I think makes this one. And I'm just going to kind of get this to the length that I want. As I said, I'm going for roughly two inches on this one. But you can certainly go bigger or smaller as necessary. And then I'm just going to trim up this wanky end. Tie that in kind of right behind the eye of the hook. I like to make sure that this is laying flat, that the skin is, is flat on top of the hook. Um, sometimes it has a tendency to want to kind of twist one way or the other. get this good and secure and I'm actually going to kind of build up this head a little bit just so I have a good base for my adhesive eyes to stick onto. good so I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish this and that's gonna be it for the tying portion now I just need to add my eyes and finish off the head with some UV resin and I believe that my eyeballs fell on the floor which they did so for eyes I'm using some uh, five millimeter chartreuse uh, eyes from fly tires dungeon if anybody is not familiar with Fly Tires Dungeon, for things like adhesive eyes, it absolutely cannot be beat. Um, I stopped buying these things in a fly shop as soon as I discovered Fly Tires Dungeon. Um, this pack of 20 eyes in a fly shop is going to cost you, you know, four or five bucks. There's 75 cents at Fly Tires Dungeon, so I, I don't work for them. I don't get any kickback from them or anything, but I'm here to tell you. They are the way to go, and these eyes are every bit as good as anything you find in a fly shop. So I'm just going to get these eyeballs kind of right on here, and then I like to look at them from the front and make sure that they're lined up.
And then I'm using some Solares Thin UV Resin. And I'm going to put a little bit on the top between the eyes. This is just to kind of get it secured. And then I will shoot that with the light. Flip it over and do the exact same thing underneath. Put some resin between the eyes. Let it kind of soak in there a little bit to get down in there and hold these eyes in place. Sometimes I like to give the vice a little wiggle and let that, that resin kind of flow down in there. Okay, and you can stop there. Um, those eyes aren't going anywhere. I like to, I like to add a little bit of resin to each eyeball because I really, really want these things to be secured. And I'll just take a toothpick and kind of spread it around, kind of come over the edge. I don't like there to be a lip. Um, if I can feel a lip at the top of the eyes, I add a little bit more resin, just because I. I feel like that helps make it a little more durable. I don't know for sure that it does, but confidence is a big thing, and this is how I like to do it. So I'll kind of just work that all the way around, spreading it out, making sure everything is good and covered. Looks pretty good. And I like to just run my run my finger along and if I feel any ledge, any bit of a anything where that eye could hit a rock or something and, and catch the eye and, and maybe jar it loose. Then I'll add a little bit more resin, but that feels pretty good. So that's all there is. Like I said, it's a very, very simple fly, very easy to tie. Um, you could use, like I said, different materials, different flash. Um, I'm using some ice stub shimmer fringe for a flash just because I had a bunch sitting on my desk. Uh, it looks pretty good. I've been using some uh, ripple ice fiber pearl for that. I use, like I said, just regular flashaboo, crystal flash. Um, Whatever, it doesn't matter at all. And again, you don't have to use the, the dub, dubbing brush body. You can just use an, any sort of normal dubbing, chenille, estaz, uh, you know, whatever. You can definitely uh, experiment with this. But you can see it just gives you a, a real nice little bait fish profile. Uh, the, the, the barred rabbit strip kind of gives it that chum fry-ish look to it. Um, it's definitely not a not your traditional chum fry type pattern, but as I said, it's been producing extremely well for me the last few weeks. Cutthroat have been just gobbling it up. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was out on a beach. There was a lot of fish around, and they were just ignoring my my squids, my squimps, clousers, kind of all my my standard go to stuff. And man, I put this thing on, and I think I hooked six fish in a row on six different casts. Uh, and then proceeded to have a, a stellar day on that beach. So anyway, there you go. Give this one a shot. Add a few to your box. If it works for you, love to hear about it. And as always, thanks for watching.